Hello, my name is Doreen Ellen Beldotan in Spot. And lately I've been making a few videos, getting information out in stages, um, because I'm trying to lay the groundwork for correct understanding of what's going on in our world. There's a lot of misunderstanding. People are understanding approximately. They're understanding in a piecemeal kind of a way. Um, I'd like to put it all together herein and hopefully um, it will calm things down, um, make things easier to, to understand and to tolerate. The world that we are living in is mostly artificial. Uh, there are some very real things in our world and that is what holds it together if it was completely artificial. It couldn't exist at all, but it's in the main artificial. What's generating this world is the Talmud. Principally the Babylonian Talmud, but uh, also the, uh, the, the Talmud Yerushalmi is an attempt to import what really is in Judaism into uh, the land of Israel, and it isn't much better. The Talmud is that which is not really Torah, which the Jews are learning continuously, and they are generating an artificial world out of it. Most of the rabbis do not know they're doing this, and I, I have to make this very, very clear that this is not being done to be evil. This is not being done um, intentionally. Most have absolutely no idea that they have the power to be able to create a world. Um, they think that they are preparing themselves for a future world. This is what they've been told. But the learning of the Talmud, which is not really Torah, is generating an artificial world overlaid and superimposed upon the real world, which is the world that's generated by real Torah. I think initially the, the rabbis who started to learn this fake kind of Torah, um, some may have had uh, selfish intentions and uh, power grabs and so forth and so on, but I think that a lot of it really stemmed from them finding the, the moral demands of real Torah very, very difficult to bear. And I think that they thought that they could kind of water it down and sort of make a deal with God, you know, we'll, we'll keep some elements, but we'll do, we'll do others and not do others and, and kind of like mix it in with our own ideas and I think what they basically wanted was uh, a watered down version of, of, of Torah and that, that's not what happened. Um, as a result of learning the Babylonian Talmud in Hebrew, which are the, the, the sound waves that have the most effect on matter and make matter the most abdurate they created an, an artificial world. And that artificial world is um, characterized by an artificial mathematics. Real mathematics, Torah mathematics, doesn't have irrational, uh, irrational numbers uh, because there are no rational thoughts. It doesn't have any arbitrary laws that are sort of made up because it works sort of some of the time. Um, the mathematics that describes the world that we live in is an artificial mathematics. Real Torah mathematics is whole numbers. Of course, there are multiplications, there are fractions, but it's, it's also involved in, in the language, in the Hebrew language. Together, the language and the number system create a, a real world. The mathematics that describes this world is a, a, an erroneous and inaccurate mathematics, which is creating an erroneous and inaccurate world. 
the physical laws of this world are not just that way. They are also being generated. Uh, the nature of matter in this world is also not just happening to be that way. There be, it's being generated that way, and that is why uh, matter in this world is kind of, well, schluck. Um, it's, it's not really good stuff. Um, that is being broken up now. Uh, what's happening is real Torah is starting to emerge again. There are enough Jews living on the land, even though the state is superimposed on the land, who know that something is wrong, who want to go back to the way things once were, that the way we, um, connections that we feel with our ancestors, there are enough Jews who have rejected uh, Babylonian Talmud that uh, real Torah land is starting to come through that very hard and abdurate impacted world that's sitting on top of Torah world. Talmud is uh, an anagram for the word Moledit, which is uh, the land of your birth and the land of birthing. Uh, it's inaccurately translated as either a motherland or a fatherland. It's, it's the land of, of one's birth. And Bavel, it comes from the Hebrew um, Bilbul, which is, comes from Lev, heart, but it's also a, a confusion of the heart. So the Babylonian Talmud is essentially a fake homeland that is being generated by a confusion within the heart, which necessarily creates confusion in consciousness, in the mind. That is being broken up. That is what's happening. Um, the people who are going to suffer most from the breakup are the rabbis who will not abandon Babylonian Talmud, who are in, so invested in it that they can't let it go because they're either intellectually invested in it or emotionally invested in it or financially invested in it. Um, if they won't let it go, they're going to find that their world breaks up. The same thing is true of the Christians. Christianity was generated by the errors of the rabbis. The erroneous idea about uh, Mashiach, about the Messiah, that the rabbis adopted in, in order to keep people away from knowing what real Mashiach is and, and becoming Mashiachim, um, generated Christianity. Uh, God was holding Christianity up in front of the rabbis and saying, okay, let's take your erroneous idea of what Mashiach is. We'll take it to some uh, exaggerated, ridiculous extreme so that you can see the error of your ways. I'll hold up this magnifying mirror to you and hopefully you'll see what you're doing wrong. Well, the rabbis didn't understand that a mirror was being held up to them. They just saw that this, this horrible image so they hated what they were seeing, but they didn't understand that they were seeing the error of their own ways exaggerated for them to be able to understand. Uh, so then rabbinical Judaism gave birth to an ugly, another ugly daughter, <laughs> um, Islam. Christianity, to its credit, at least maintained many of the kind and gentle and moral and compassionate teachings of, of real Torah, of original Torah. Uh, even if the idea of Mashiach was completely distorted and, and the idea of, of, of the birth of, of God and the mother um, was also misunderstood, at least they had the basic moral principles more or less right um, with some uh, editing. Islam then comes on the scene, and it's an exaggeration of the Jews' um, desire to rule, to bring the whole world under their own ideas, uh, total disrespect for 
females. Uh, the idea that, that uh, this world uh, should be sacrificed uh, for the sake of the uh, next world, is an idea which, uh, by the way, Christianity also makes that mistake. And so the people who are going to be the most disoriented uh, by the breakup that is going to happen are going to be the Jews that keep to rabbinical Judaism, the Christians, the Muslims, those who have an investment in um, mathematical and scientific principles that are based on the erroneous mathematical and scientific principles, and those who have an investment in the erroneous uh, legal systems which have been generated by the Talmud. These are all things that are daughters, sons and daughters of the Talmud. Uh, that have generation after generation been laid over layer after layer after layer that has now become so rigid um, that it's breaking, it's cracking. Actually, it actually, this has already occurred. It has already broken up. On our level as human beings, Hashem is doing it slowly so that we're not too terribly shocked by it. As shocking as it is, it could be a whole lot worse. Um, and also to give us time to be able to turn around. Um, a few months ago I went to visit in, in, in Jerusalem and I had not cleaned my teeth for a while and I had a buildup of, you know, the, the, the plaque on the back of my tooth and it broke and I thought that my tooth had broken. Went to the, to the dentist and he looked at it and he said to me, the tooth underneath is just fine. You didn't break your tooth at all. It's just the plaque over it that broke up. And uh, he said, I'll clean it away and you'll see your teeth will be absolutely fine. There's no problem. And he did and everything was okay. And I remember thinking to myself, what is Hashem trying to tell me this? Why did this happen to me exactly when I went to Jerusalem? And as I began to see what was going on in people's videos, I understood exactly why Hashem had had me have that experience to show me that the plaque is going to break up, but the tooth under it is still healthy and is still going to be uh, okay once the plaque breaks away. People might be concerned and think, well, if a whole different world is, is being revealed and there are going to be different mathematical laws, different natural laws, material is going to work differently, time is going to be experienced differently. Uh, how disorienting is that going to be? Will, will I know where I am? How will I be able to orient myself at all? And that was the message of the tooth. <laughs> yes, you will, because your soul was hewn from those original ideas from the ideas that arose in, in God's mind before all of this was laid over. So you are going to recognize that as your real being, your real teeth, your real bones, your real body, your real reality, you will certainly recognize it. The people who are going to survive this the best and the easiest are the Aboriginal people. They have always understood that the land is sacred. They have always been connected with their ancestors. They have always had an attitude of gratitude to the Creator for the land. They've taken what they needed, but not more than that. They see themselves as protectors of the land. Those are the people who are going to have the very easiest time of what's going on. And I suggest to people, especially Americans, Canadians, people in New Zealand, people in Australia, turn to the Aboriginal peoples and adopt as much as you are able to, given the fact that you are from Western culture, you can't just immediately adopt their whole way of life, but take as much as you can from them, learn from them, learn to respect them, because what they know is going to be your anchor when all of this starts to blow and it's going to blow sky high. It, this is just going to continue and increase. 
We're seeing the earth cracking. We are seeing astronomical changes. We're seeing weather changes. We're seeing extremes. This is not going away, folks. Um, and if you're a Bedurit, if you resist it, if you invest your emotions, your thoughts, your livelihood in these erroneous ideas, you are going to find yourself going down into oblivion with it. This is fair warning. I, I sent a, a letter to the Vatican. Uh, this is a few, couple of weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago, and in it I, sh I showed them proofs of what Christianity had wrong and how to understand it correctly. And I knew that it was going to cause like a, a shock to their consciousness, and I, I intended for that to happen, but I was sending it with the, the, to the purpose of it being received with some kind of understanding, with some kind of reception, with com some, because they're seeing what's going on in the world too. A week after I sent that letter, there were four, count them four, earthquakes in Rome in one day. And then there was unusual, an unusual falling of snow, and there was an avalanche of snow. God knows that that was not my purpose in sending them that information. But that is what happened because they resisted the information. And this is what's going to happen to people all over the world who resist the truth. If you take it with joy, there's one woman left a beautiful um, comment. She said, I don't know why Venus looks so much brighter, uh, but it's beautiful. Even if you don't understand exactly why what's happening is happening, look for the beauty in it, look for the positivity in it, look for the joy in it. Because if you don't, um, it's going to cause cataclysms, real cataclysms, cataclysms in your consciousness, cataclysms where you're living, uh, holes opening up, cracks opening up. This is not the result of the information that's being given to you. This is a result of resistance to that information. So please um, surrender in love because... Um, this, this is a war that, that negative forces cannot win. <laughs> Thank you for listening.